Co-written, edited, and directed by Mike Flanagan, Oculus revolves around siblings Kaylee and Tim Russell. The story unfolds through the past and the present, where a mirror, this one mirror, came into their lives and upended their whole reality. In present day, Kaylee tracks down said mirror, Tim has just been released from a mental asylum, and she seeks out his help to put an end to this mirror. Why have I chosen to talk about Oculus as part of my month of horror? Let me answer that question by starting off with a name. Mike Flanagan. Mike Flanagan is my favorite director working in horror today. This man's body of work in this genre is so high quality, so consistent, and so vast, I'd be kicking myself if I didn't talk about something by him for my month of horror. That's one part of the question answered. Now, the second part of the question is, why have I chosen Oculus? It is because this was my very first exposure to a Mike Flanagan work, and it does not get talked about as much as his other ones. So I want to talk about it. Of course, I rewatched Oculus in preparation for this video. It had been a while since I last saw it. Five, six years, maybe? I mean, you know you're in the presence of something superb when you come away from it struggling to think about the areas in which it could have improved. Every time I have watched Oculus, I have had the same reaction. I don't know what I would have done differently. I really don't know. The concept behind Oculus isn't anything new, one where the main threat is that of a mirror. The concept isn't new, but what separates this movie from the rest for me is how it capitalizes on two core ingredients, with the first being the breakdown of a family, and the second being the inability to distinguish between what's real and what's not. With Oculus, Flanagan takes these ideas, bridges them together, and delivers a fully fleshed out mindfuck of an experience that will leave you spooked the hell out on a first viewing. It's textbook psychological horror, but wielded with an unmatched elegance in craft and casting. Karen Gillan and Brenton Thwaites play Kaylee and Tim all grown up. What I absolutely love about their dynamic is, okay, let's set the scene first. The objective, led by Kaylee, is to prove that the mirror supernatural abilities are real and subsequently to destroy it. In the 11 years that had elapsed since they last saw one another, Kaylee became consumed by the trauma, while Tim had been conditioned to rationalize, to explain, and dismiss everything. While Kaylee is on camera disseminating the history of said mirror and its victims, talking about how changes in the environment occur around it, Tim will interject and rationalize, positing that all of this paranoia is just the work of an adult mind, that it's all in their heads. This is something the movie consistently maintains throughout. This dynamic is brought to life so convincingly by Gillen and Thwaites. You really do get invested in their plight and the stakes are palpable. When the mirror starts making moves, this is when the movie starts to mess with us. And all of a sudden, Kaylee and Tim's fear becomes our fear. You're in it, you're in that atmosphere, and you won't be able to discern as sharply, just like them. All of this is amplified when the story jumps from the present to the past. Younger Kaylee and Tim, being played by Annalise Basso and Garrett Ryan, seeing these two as kids just adds a greater degree of vulnerability and helplessness to what happens when the mirror starts messing with them specifically their parents. The breakdown of a family. This is innately petrifying. The people who keep you safe, the people who love you, who protect you, and will do anything for you. Now, flip that. Scares-wise, what do you need to add to that? It's already scary. Rory Cochrane as the dad being turned by the mirror. That's already scary. Katie Sackoff as the mother and the way she interacts with plates at one point, that is already scary. The growing distress building up in Kaylee and Tim, that's already scary. Everything about this setup is in the right place, but man, it's the execution. Holy shit. The script that Mike Flanagan co-wrote alongside Jeff Howard is filled with natural dialogue and characters reacting believably the actors turning in first-class performances. The cinematography, the pacing, and the music, all of this feels so deliberate. 
But what I want to specifically touch on is the editing. When it comes to jumping between the past and present, Flanagan is a master at this. Haunting of Hill House might be the clearest example of how good he is at this. But where Oculus is concerned, the movie starts out and it establishes a line. Early on in the runtime, whenever the story jumps back and forth, the line is visibly clear. The cuts are more obvious. But what Flanagan diabolically accomplishes with this story and the way he uses editing to disorient you, the line between the past and the present gradually blurs. With it, so too does the line between what is real and what's not. There is a pervasive feeling that these characters are never fully in control. And the riveting thrill of watching this movie unfold is seeing how hard these characters fight to hold on to their sense of control, control of their actions, control of their surroundings, and control of their minds. The editing immaculately puts you in the space the story wants the characters to be in. And with it, you're lost. You're invested in these characters, but you are frazzled and unnerved at what's going to happen next. And you really do fear for their safety. The sense of dread is so well realized. But the thing with this narrative mechanic of moving between different time periods, you have to take into account how much it'll come at the expense of pacing. It can be quite easy to mess up. Like, one moment you're really sucked into what the characters are going through and you're receiving such immense emotional stimuli only to jarringly get whisked away to another time where now you're waiting impatiently for that moment to continue again. This is where we are in safe hands with Mike Flanagan because he knows that the key is moment to moment engagement, regardless of whether you're in the past or in the present. In Oculus, both of which are irresistibly compelling. You want to see where they go. You want to understand how closely they impact one another. You want to see the shift in character dynamics and personalities. That's what this movie achieves so effectively, and that's why I've always loved it. Oculus is a seminally disconcerting mindfuck. I love the story. I love the characters. I love the questions it poses. I love how the past and present bleed into one another. There are a myriad of unsettling moments, underscored by an equally unsettling score. The performances are first class, its themes are deep, the pacing is pitch perfect. It is a fantastic piece of psychological horror storytelling.